Good day everyone. I am Mr. Clement Dre. I am in charge of educating you today. First of all, I want to thank the entire committee for accepting me here, and the director of this foundation. I would like to say a big thank you to her for inviting me over. I really do appreciate it. I also want to thank everyone who made time out of their busy schedules to be here. I really appreciate you. Now to the main reason why I'm here. I would be talking about the power of the Tungu. Most of us believers don't know how and when to use our tongue and mouth. The things to say and things not to say, how and when to talk. Most of us have no idea. The book of James chapter 3 verses 1 to the end explains vividly on how the tongue would send most people to hell and how it would send some people to heaven. You might be wondering how do I use my mouth then? The best thing for you is to be silent in most cases. No one to use your mouth. I would list some cases where you have to keep silent. Be silent in the heat of anger. Good afternoon sir. Afternoon to you too. You called for me sir, I hope all is well? Nothing at all, it is just that the contract we went to sign yesterday. What about it sir? I want you handle the project along with Mr. Greg. You would be in charge of everything. What? Thank you so much sir. I've told Mr. Greg that he would be assisting you. I believe you know what to do. My assistant will hand the files over to you. Yes sir. I really do appreciate you. I trust you will do a good work. Just make sure you do a perfect work and I don't want any mistakes. You know the client is special to us. Yes sir. I will. I will take my leave now sir. Okay. Good afternoon sir. I told you not to let anyone disturb me including you. I'm trying to work here. I'm very sorry sir, but this is important. What is it? What is so important that you had to disturb me? The project you handed to Mr. Chris and Mr. Greg, the client called to cancel it. What? And you could not call me? You said that no one should disturb for now, so I waited. But when you did not finish off early I thought I should tell you at the right time. But why did he cancel it all of a sudden? He said the work is moving slow and they have been working poorly. What? And supervisors have not been coming over to check the work. He called to tell to refund his money and he has also given it to someone else. I thought I put Mr. Chris and Mr. Greg on this project. I clearly told them to not make any mistakes and they did this. Call them over here. Okay sir. Do that immediately. I will sir. You called for me sir. I called for you and Mr. Greg. Where is he? He was having his lunch. What on earth did you two do? I don't understand you sir. The project I told you and Mr. Greg to do, what happened to it? No response? You two have failed woefully in the job. Our client called this afternoon and wants to terminate the contract. Do you know what you've done? I have lost a lot of money because of your laziness and nonchalant attitude towards the project. I trusted you both with the work and you acted like imbeciles and ruined everything. I admit I was wrong sir. I am very sorry. Do you think Sorry will bring back the project? You have failed the company and me. You behaved like fools and destroyed what I worked for. I do not have anything to say to you anymore, so get out of my sight now. And tell my assistant to bring Mr. Greg here. Good afternoon sir. What is good about this afternoon? Answer me. What is wrong sir? You sound angry. Why won't I be angry? You and Mr. Chris has failed me. I asked you both to handle a project for me and you failed to perform your job. Was it too much to ask of you? I did not know sir. I thought I could go to check it next week sir. I called Mr. Chris and we both agreed to check the construction progress next week. Next week? After I gave you the project a month ago. The problem lies with the workers. They were very lazy. They only wanted to get paid and not work, so the blame lies with them. Are you seriously putting the blame on the workers? If you had not resided around here, would they not have done their work as they should? If you both had supervised them, they would have worked harder, but you chose to postpone the supervision. We were not lazying around. There was so much here that did not spare us enough time to go and supervise the work. So are you putting the blame on me for your incompetence? I'm very sure I told your superiors to withhold any assignments they would give to you because I wanted you to do a good job. No sir, 
It's just that we were busy with other work you gave us. Shut up already. You still have the mind to shift the blame around and talk back at me. Instead of you to be sorry and try to make amends for the damage you have done, you have no shame nor do you regret what you did. You are not being understanding here sir. I already explained why we did not go. And you still have the audacity to talk back? You obviously have no remorse for what you have done. We lost millions of dollars because of the both of you and instead of you to be sorry, you'd rather talk back to me? Since you do not regret what you have done, I will make you regret it instead. So as from today, I don't want to see you in my company. You are fired. Sir, this is unfair. I have done nothing wrong. We only postponed our work for a little time and you are sacking me? Now get out of my office before I get angry. I'm sorry sir. Get out before I call the security men on you. And why are you here? I came to apologize properly to you sir. I know what we did was wrong and uncalled for and I admit my mistakes. No excuse would be able to cover up for it. I'm very sorry sir. Why are you apologizing just now? I saw that you were angry earlier on, and I did not want to infuriate you, so I chose to stay quiet and after all it was our fault. Our pastor has taught us to be silent in the time of anger. What church do you go to? I go to End Time Heavenly Revival Ministries, Revival Chapel. I am very sorry sir for any mistakes we have made. I promise that we will not do this next time. You have been pardoned, but there would not be a we. Why sir? I already sat Mr. Greg yesterday. He kept annoying and shifting the blame, and he was not remorseful for what happened. He was being rude, so I sacked him. But I see you are different. You chose to remain silent when I kept getting angry at you. And you even came back to ask for forgiveness. I did not plan on firing Mr. Greg, but he brought that on himself. Thank you so much sir for your kindness. I promise to do better now. You are welcome. I have other work to do, so if you will excuse me sir. I need to go. You may go. Be silent when you don't have all the facts. Another time or situation where you have to be silent is when you haven't verified the story. Be silent if your words will offend a weaker person. Good evening ma. Good evening sir. I would like to pay for my medicine. Okay, that would be 20,000. Would you pay with cash or card? I already transferred the money to the company's account. You should check it out. Oh, so that was you? Yes. With the name, Elias Bridge. I confirmed it sir. Get well soon, stay safe and have a nice day sir. I will. How are doing my friend? I have been doing good. Did you see the man that passed just now? Is it the man with the bald head? Exactly. Do you know he has cancer? Cancer? Yes, I could not believe it too. That is why his head is bald and he looks ugly and sick. He must have done something wrong to deserve this. Most times he cannot come to buy his drugs himself because he is always sick. And it is rumored that his wife will leave him soon. Why would you talk about him like that? Don't you know it is the same God that created him, that also created you? But did you not see how he looked like? And so what? That does not give you the right to talk about someone like that. You should put yourself in his shoes. If you had cancer like him, would you appreciate another person talking about you like that? At our church we've been taught to be silent if your words will offend a weaker person. I'm sorry. I would try my best to be silent next time. Yes, that is exactly what you should do. Be silent when it is time to listen. Be silent when you are tempted to make light of holy things. Be silent when you are tempted to joke about sin. Be silent if you would be ashamed of your word later. Be silent if your words would convey the wrong impression. Be silent if the issue is none of your business. Be silent when you are tempted to tell an outright lie. Good evening Elijah. Evening, how are you doing? I'm good. Yesterday, you were not at church. I hope all is well. It was nothing much. My father sent me somewhere yesterday. He sent me on an errand yesterday. So, I could not come. Are you sure? Yes. But I asked your father yesterday, why you did not come to church. And he said you were at home and you didn't just want to come to church. Oh, I'm sorry for lying to you. Can you see yourself now? This was exactly what our pastor Pastor Femi Atbeo said yesterday at church. He said, 
Be silent when you are tempted to tell an outright lie. I've learned a lesson today. When next I am tempted to tell lies, I will try to keep my mouth shut. I will see you later then. Goodbye. Be silent if your words will damage someone else's reputation. Be silent if your words will damage a friendship. Be silent when you are feeling critical. Be silent if you can't say it without screaming. Be silent if your words will be a poor reflection of your friends and family. Good day sir. Good day to you too. How may I help you? I guess you are Mr. David. Yes I am. And if I'm not wrong, you must know Mr. Edward very well. I do. What are all these questions for? Someone happened to describe Mr. Edward to me, and the person wants me to give him a job. So? I came to ask you about his character and how he is. I don't understand you sir. If it is not true to ask, I want to know if he has a virtuous character or a bad character. Um, do I have to answer? It depends on what you think. Because I want to know I am not giving the wrong person a job. Well, I don't have anything to say about his character. I would rather remain silent on this. Why? That's because I should not be the one to define someone else's character, and also I've been taught to stay silent on some certain occasions, so that I don't end up saying the wrong things. I see. I should not have asked such questions either. I would advise you to rather watch and check him yourself, so that you would not judge someone on a person's word. Thank you so much for your response. I guess I will see you later then. Goodbye. Bye. Be silent if you may have to eat your words later. Be silent if you have already said it more than one time. Be silent when you are tempted to flatter a wicked person. Be silent when you are supposed to be working instead. In conclusion you should endeavor to use your mouth at the right time and keep silent in most cases. I want you to keep this in mind, that whoever guards his mouth and tongue, keeps his soul from troubles. Good day veterans. if you enjoyed watching the video, kindly like the video, subscribe to our page and share the video to others. You can also come to experience and worship God in our church at 108, Kandos Road, opposite two-story bus stop, Apaya, Barowalagos, Nigeria. God bless.